And that also happens to be the fastest, largest accumulation of wealth the world has ever seen. Nobody's ever seen anything like this before. It's an equivalence to the entire baby boom generation entering into financialization, buying stocks and stuff like that, plus the opening of China to the WTO, plus uh, the Iron Curtain coming down in Russia. It's, it's of that magnitude of wealth generation in one short period. To put it in perspective, at $100 trillion, the S&P 500 has taken 100 years to accumulate $50 trillion of value. 100 years. And we will do it in less than 20. In this edition of the Squiggle Dow podcast, hosts Jared and Nifty engage in an enlightening conversation with Raul Pal, the esteemed founder and CEO of Real Vision and a seasoned global macro investor. The dialogue delves into Pal's journey into the realm of cryptocurrency, drawing from his experiences in traditional finance and offering his seasoned perspectives on the current state of the crypto market. At the time of the discussion, Bitcoin's price hovers around $70,000, marking a 1% uptick in the past 24 hours and an impressive 133% surge over the preceding 30 days. Notably, approximately 19.7 million out of the total 21 million Bitcoin are currently in circulation. From dissecting market dynamics to prognosticating future trends, PAL provides a comprehensive analysis of the trajectory of digital assets and offers invaluable insights for investors navigating this dynamic landscape. As the conversation unfolds, Listeners are treated to a deeper exploration of Pal's perspectives on the future of digital assets, his unique insights, and his visionary outlook for the cryptocurrency space. Tune in for an insightful interview with Raul Pal as we delve into the exciting potential and evolving dynamics of digital assets. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. And I got to the realization that nobody owns anything in the financial system. Not even the money in your bank account is yours. And when Lehman went under, they realized that there's collateral at the bottom of the system and all of this leverage on top. And so everybody's got a claim on the same thing. And so you don't own any of that either. So that made me start a journey of trying to start the world's safest bank, because I thought maybe there could be a bank that just holds treasuries. And we got stopped by the Dallas Fed, who said, this is a great idea. And we're like, thank you. And they said, but you're not going to get a license. And we said, why not? They said, because you'll take all the deposits from the banking system. With crypto, and I'll go through my crypto journey in a bit, but, but the crypto question is, and I asked Peter Schiff this, is, is the world going to be more digital tomorrow than it is today? If the answer is that, then the probabilistic outcome is this space is going to continue to see adoption. Right, it's pretty simple. My crypto journey actually came back from the financial crisis of 2008 and the European sovereign crisis when I was living in Spain. I thought we were going to lose the banks over the weekend. And the ECB actually forced a bailout of the banking system. Um, and the Spaniards, being a proud nation, didn't want it, but they took it in the end. They were forced to. I was buying a generator and tin food. I thought we were going to lose the banks. My parents' friends had had their money confiscated from local caches, local banks, savings banks. Um, people in the property industry, that was a lot because I lived in a beach town. Half of them went bankrupt. I'd seen Bitcoin since 2010. I'm a macro guy. My job is to figure out what these things are. But by 2012, I realized that blockchain was the answer because then we could have the recorded ownership of assets which we didn't have. You know, we had this weird ledger system, but everybody else had a claim on it, and you didn't know that at the time. So I saw that immediately, saw the kind of gold value of Bitcoin back then, and I wrote the first ever macro strategy piece on it. And I said back then, this is the greatest trade the world has ever seen. And it's proven out to be true. My working thesis now is you've seen me post in the past charts of the adoption of crypto. So we use active wallets. Now we know they're double counted, but we're comparing it to the internet, which was IP addresses, which are also double counted. So it's it's fine, right? It gives you the rough rule of thumb. There's about 520 or 550 million wallets, active wallets out there. It's growing at twice the speed of the internet. So this is the fastest adoption of any asset class or technology the world has ever seen. Technology side has just been beaten by um, AI just because you know Microsoft and other things can install it everywhere instantly. But it's massive because it is an asset and AI is not an asset. 
So if you just extrapolate that chart, you get to a billion users by the end of uh, 2025 and 4 billion by the end of 2030. Okay, that's half the world. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, you can also take the log chart of Bitcoin and just extrapolate out into the future. And you can see the, the trend rate of growth, the exponential trend over time. So it gets to somewhere like a million dollars. And what happens is the space goes from two and a half trillion, where it is today, to let's say at the end of this cycle, 10 trillion, maybe 12, maybe 15, depending what the cycle's like. And then onto 100 trillion, which is the size of most of the other asset classes like equities. Um, in fact, most of them are larger than that. So that movement from two and a half trillion to 10 trillion to 100 trillion is the trade. In this segment, Raul Pal delves into the intricacies of the crypto market, drawing upon insights gleaned from top hedge fund managers and applying them to the realm of cryptocurrency. He articulates why crypto presents a compelling investment opportunity and offers guidance on how to embark on this journey effectively. Emphasizing the importance of a robust investment strategy and exercising patience amidst crypto's volatility, Pal provides a strategic roadmap for navigating the unpredictable yet promising landscape of digital assets. His focus on long-term thinking and recognition of the transformative potential of blockchain technology offers a comprehensive framework for investors seeking to thrive in the evolving crypto terrain. Join us as we delve deeper into Pal's perspectives and strategies in this enlightening episode. Because yeah, people lose the wood through the trees in this space, right? It's, it's so easy to get caught up in the drama, the volatility, the down cycles that make everybody feel like shit, then the glory times. You forget what's actually happening. And, you know, kind of in the end, every single, you know, major crypto position you've ever sold, you regret when you look back. Because if you divide any asset by crypto, any single asset on earth, they all go down in price versus owning Bitcoin or you choose your asset, right? And it's like, once you realize that, it's really difficult to get that out of your head. And so it, to me, became a realization over time from about 2020 onwards that there was no point doing anything else. Even though I'm a true macro guy and I used to do absolutely everything else, I now observe what the dollar's doing and stuff like that, but only within the context of where it's going with crypto. And many greats of the industry have gone down the same journey. Many of them were global macro investor subscribers, Dan Tapiero, um, Mark Yusko, a whole bunch of these people, Alan Howard. You know, they've all gone down this path of, fuck it, there is no other asset that matters. This is the greatest macro opportunity of all time. So why even focus on anything else? It takes a while for people to get this. And what I keep trying to do is get people to say, okay, I love gold right now. Okay, great. Divide it by the Bitcoin chart. You know, I love oil right now. Great. Divide it by the Bitcoin chart. And our job really is to maximize our returns. You know, we're trying to look after our future selves here. So as an investor, you've got to take the optimal asset. Now, everything is correlated. Even crypto is part of the same cycle as technology stocks. You know, most equity markets, commodity markets are just lagging. It's all the same bloody cycle. So you don't need to choose one asset. Everything else is just suboptimal returns. But what happens is people lose their fucking minds in a bull market and in a bear market. In a bear market, they get rid of all their tokens. They say, never again. This is the worst thing I've ever done. And in a bull market, they end up buying too much shit, stupid shit. And really, to not fuck up the movement from two and a half trillion to 10 trillion to 100 trillion is to own the highest quality assets and do nothing. Now, the proven assets keep trending. If I look at the compound rate of growth, the annualized rate of growth, Bitcoin's 150%. ETH, since 2012, ETH is 180, uh, yeah, about 160 to 70%, something like that, since 2015, 16. And um, that's per year. I mean, this is bananas returns. And then Solana's like 200. Um, and that was a snapshot in February before. I mean, many of these aren't at all-time highs yet. So the returns from just owning the top assets is so good. Now, I also understand that a lot of people may only have 10 grand worth of savings. So they think, well, you know, even if Bitcoin goes to a million, that's a 14x. So I've got 140 grand. Can that even get me a deposit on a house? Is that a retirement saving? I get it. So people really want to take more risk, but just do it intelligently. And that's how not to fuck this up. 
Because if you turn your 10 grand into zero and you do it every crypto cycle, which many, many, many people did, you know, the NFT cycle destroyed a lot of people and a lot of people got destroyed in, in just all of the kind of super early stage speculative stuff. We've all got wallets of shame. So it's not like any of us are any better. We all have the wallets of shame. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.